vegan world. That vegan world. Okay. It's, it's, you're, but I notice okay, you have okay, clothes on. And I notice that you have a cell phone and you have a computer. It is unfair to pick one thing that lions do that you want to mimic. When I came in this room, you did not kneel down and sniff my ass. My activism. But at the end of the day, what sustains me as an activist is love. Yeah. So vegan. Yeah. Nine months now. How is it? I like not once you cross the line, once you go over that hill, I can't imagine going back. I feel sick to think what you're putting in. Maybe you should only be buying cosmetics that are truly cruelty free. Yeah. Development. Yes, very recent. How did that happen? Um, there's one very loud. Tal Gaboa. Okay, you you could consider her an aggressive activist as well. It's very virus. You're paying for cruelty. Please make the kind choice. It's just important to be conscious of what you're doing. If you can be conscious of what you're eating and conscious of what you're doing in the world, and as long as you're aware of what's going on, you know you're no longer anemic. So that's the first benefit. And I thought you had to have meat to have protein, get your iron. That's just that's false information. It's an alpha. Uh, you know, our roles in society should be to protect the vulnerable and to stand up for those that can't defend themselves. And. I'm vegan. I don't eat meat or chicken or pork or fish or eggs or dairy. I'm Let's see what Alex has to say in this clip about the ethics of eating backyard eggs. Why are vegans again? My English teacher recommended this documentary that exposed oh, the animal agriculture. Horses are not skeletally mature until around five years of age. But commonly, their racing careers begin when they're only two. I'm advocating veganism for, I think, 30 years now, so it's been a really long time. Wow. Yes, um, since, since 1989, actually. Um, you were, you were long-term vegan, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but vegan for about five years, I'd say. So my career could be over, and I'm okay with that, because I'm, I'm making mm -hmm. an ethical, moral stance, and I love that. I just, yeah, I, I, love I still crush it. Dotsy Bausch is one of those people. Fiona Oaks shares that story. She's yeah. a vegan who's five. She's in her 50s. Mm, but Shahina Malik is somebody I just like habitually mention all the time. Because her mom raised five vegan kids since birth, Jahina and all her siblings, and they're all athletes. I think mean, one is like, I don't know, elite basketball player. One is an elite volleyball player. Probably one is a track star. It's to force. Force? You pay people to force knives in animals' throats. That's what you do. I make videos about veganism and identity politics. You exploit and kill other animals. So, like, vegans have got quite the easy job. I find that people will actually be proud to represent the stupidest shit, like killing people and hurting people and disrespecting women. But when it comes to, like, representing eating right, you get laughed at. Be kind. I'm hardcore with it. If you're trying to avoid wool, why not make that leap? Say, I'm never going to buy wool again. The reason I hate vegans is because I think we're humorless, you know, we think we're better than you. They think they're always banging on about it. And all of those things are true. I am better than you if you're not vegan. In terms of my ethical decisions, I'm so much better than you. I'm better for the planet. I'm better for the animals. There's other vegan sort of role that they've been chatting about. Actually, I've never found a good vegan hot chocolate. So if anybody has a suggestion, put it in the comments below. <laughs> Matt, probably like in the summer. Then I'll be doing some undercover work and some um, factory farms around the country. Animal lover and animal activist, and it's important to me to support brands that actually help um, animals. No such thing as a meat-eating environmentalist. Nowadays, being green They've kind of dictated my life. My dog is right next to me. I've always rescued dogs, and I've had cats. Very urgent animal overpopulation crisis. One that can be remedied by refusing to buy from breeders or pet shops. If you have carefully considered bringing a four-legged companion into your family, you can save a life by adopting a dog, or preferably two, so they can keep each other company from your local animal shelter. For more information, please visit Peter. And there it is, psychedelic vegan lollipop. Because a lot of lollipops aren't vegan. They're not, so you can know. Perhaps when they're not in the spotlight, these animals are kept chained or locked away in cages where they spend the majority of their lives. And that's no life at all. So please don't support circuses that use animals.
Why is veganism important as far as energy use for those people who don't know? Industrial farms, and they are not only um, inhumane, they're producing massive amounts of pollution and methane. Mm -hmm. Might say. Um, I'm vegan. I believe uh, in buying cruelty free products. Um, some people say that you know, nothing disgusting. No, out of dairy juice. Oh, yeah. Let, but let I don't find that too disgusting. Oh, really yeah, some of it's horrible, but. It's... My name is Ruby Rose, and I'm an actor and an activist. And I'm also very proud to be welcomed into the Rebel family. Just being a realist, they're probably not living their, their diets as much as they promote it online, the way that somebody in the vegan camp lives, eats, breathes this way of life. And there isn't, it's a zero or one. There's no deviating from it because it has that strong ethical pipeline as well. From an environmental standpoint, all that. But I think we need to look at how can we make the biggest impact we want. Find a way to make it work. We need to stop eating animal products now. I'm a physician, which means that I help people stay healthy or get healthy. COVID comes from animals to humans and causes disease. So, what is it called? It's called a zoonotic disease. Where does that usually happen? Hmm, let me tell you. It's from the yucky factories where they farm animals and they put these poor little animals in tight quarters where they're really close to each other and they can't hardly move. So what can you do to prevent infections? Well, be very careful right now and wear a mask, wash your hands, and make sure that you practice social distancing. But in the future, talk to your parents about becoming vegan. Stop eating animals and you could perhaps prevent the next zoonotic infection. We have no data to show us that we need animal products and that animal products help us. We only have data to show us that animal products can hurt us and that are associated with more chronic disease, more hypertension, more diabetes, more coronary artery disease, and more cancers. So do we need any animal products? No. I did it because of science. Um, I did it because of research that I did. I did it because of how I saw a whole plant based diet work with people. I did it because of the environment, finding out what animal products and animal agriculture does to our environment. I did it because of the absolute torture that happens to animals. Which brings up a point. Veganism is an ethic. So I don't know, these people that say I'm leaving veganism are basically saying I'm changing my ethics, I guess. Um, I know true vegans. True vegans are vegan for the animals, helping protect animals, and they, are, they would never leave veganism because they got a zit or they got gas. My friends, Dr. Mauricio Gonzalez and Dr. Michelle McCracken, and they're both vegan doctors here in New York City. But we have scientific evidence that shows that it might definitely improve the life of mm -hmm. millions of people, especially people who are, people who are suffering chronic diseases. Mm -hmm. So we just got to get the evidence that we should be eating mostly plants, ideally all plants. And my patients that have done that, have many of them have come off of medications or at least lowered their medications and had tremendous success. So, so the vegan diet provides you with so many different nutrients, two specifically that are not found in animal products, and that's fiber and phytonutrients. And the phytonutrients is why we say the color of the rainbow. Is that associated with Ayurvedic medicine? Yes. Ben Alter, I'm a naturopathic doctor and I'm also a vegan. In 1999, reporting in the University of Chicago Press, they estimate that the savings in this country is the elimination of cardiovascular disease alone. Forty trillion dollars. We need especially we need yellow vegetables. These are filled with antioxidants that quench free radicals and quell inflammation. Reversible diseases. Dinners of big salads and hearty vegetable soups and big plates of veggies and uh, and vegetable curries, etc. Wonderful effects that within days the obesity starts to melt away and the arteries open up and the high blood pressure comes down and the joints stop hurting and the asthmatic lungs stop wheezing so much and the, asthma, the migraine headaches get better uh, and the psoriatic skin clears off the inflamed intestines settle down. People turn into normal healthy people. Larry Fraser. And his team at Loma Linda University calculated that a healthy diet and lifestyle was good for about a decade of additional years of life. So we'll take it. Vegan, that's all I'm saying. Uh, Watson was his name in London, and he took the word vegetarian, and they created a society, the British Vegan Society. It was all about animal ethics. As much as possible, we won't use animals for clothes, for food, for comfort. We'll honor uh, a very sensitive ethical approach. You know. Don't trust me. Don't tr no, no. We trust the science. And so there's studies. But, you know, I talk about in the introduction to how not to die. Yes. God's original diet for us, as outlined in the book of Genesis, when God created Adam and Eve. In fact, he told them to be vegans. They were to be eating, a, essentially, um, a fruit-based diet. Uh, in chapter 3, plants of the field, which um, can be interpreted as your grains, legumes, green leafy vegetables, and root vegetables. Many of us live in companion animals, such as dogs, cats, and rabbits. We share our homes with them, consider them members of the family, and we grieve when they die. But we kill and eat other animals. But if you really think about living, are not different. A vegan world. To convince someone to go vegan is to show that their tribe, whatever it is, is consistent with the vegan ethic. Buddhists talk about ahimsa, nonviolence, and compassion for all living beings. If you're talking to a Christian, you know, talk to them about the Christian Vegetarian Association. So my job is to go into schools, universities, and to empower youth and adults through compassion, through empathy. And so, for the most part, I, I generally spend the school year talking about veganism. The way I encourage others, you know, at the protests, going out to rodeos and, and, and factory farming places, we didn't get the media coverage, we didn't really make any effect at all, you know, other than we seemed to anger a lot of people. So I decided, let's go in the direction of feeding people. Instead of telling someone what not to do, I said, try this. It's about uh, promoting the truth. It's all about positioning rhetoric and language and habit and culture and tradition and really getting to the root of what the messages are behind culture. The most effective medium for me to convey 
the positives about veganism is my own lifestyle and my own health. Vegan activism is through education. I think that education is the best way to help people uh, transition to veganism as a spontaneous sharing that comes from within the being. Its primary education is educating myself. For years, I focused on ethics exclusively, and people wanted to say what's in it for me. So one of my favorite hobbies has been giving out tofurkey for the last 20 years. I've been an activist for a long to talk about veganism is to interject it into uh, conversations in line at a store. It's so easy to bring up that subject now. Sort of the education work. I see the education work as the preventative work of the symptoms. You know, I'm pretty much vegetarian, but I do eat chicken. And I said, oh, I said, how did you choose chickens as who you would eat? They're stupid. And I said, oh, I said, I have a completely different experience. What I find most effective today is talking to people, whether one-on-one -on -one or in a group. I think that a combination of sharing facts and information and asking questions, you know, the Socratic method. If one and I, we have a unique family, salads, they have things like that, but you couldn't, we weren't the police. We recognized that you could have neurotic children if you tried to, if you tried to condemn them for the choices they made. You hope that you plant seeds. We took them to NHA conferences. We exposed them to, you know, documentaries. And that certain people in the vegan lifestyle, some Meatless Monday movement, where I tell people that if you have 53 Mondays within a year, good health comes through accumulation because you accumulated bad health by doing the same thing over and over again. So one day at a time with urgency. And you have to understand that you are facing diabetes. I spend a lot of my time online, doing online uh, social activism. And so I encounter a lot of people who are negative towards veganism or, or questioning it. My activism, my advocacy, writing and speaking and getting the word out in a more concentrated way to people who were open to hearing it. Um, I encourage others to be vegan by living by example, to try to be the best specimen of a vegan I can be, um, to spread information in a benevolent fashion. There are times when, you know, I will go out uh, with uh, co-workers and friends and they may uh, question. My activism is involved, uh, direct action everywhere, a systemic issue, hacking the systems, uh, you know, governments and political leaders. And, and these corporations and different ways of different advocacy. So uh, vegan outreach is still the animal save movement. And I manage a vegan food aid program. And I work with Black Lives Matter Los Angeles, Black Women Farmers of LA, the LGBT Center South on MLK, um, and Black Women for Wellness. The things I find most effective in helping people become vegan is just simply being a role model. As, a, as the owner of a fitness center, uh, staying fit and healthy, making sure uh, we look at blood work and the gut microbiome. And Mostly just by example, just, just by being, um, you know, the animal centered design that we do here at the refuge where we think about what spaces help animals be who they really are and live live their best life i think that has also probably has a an impact vegan and so in hanging out with my family there's always got to be vegan options some of my family members op more open to vegan options is by having family be vegan others to be vegan through community efforts i do i go out and do food justice um, campaigns chronic diseases which are traditionally black and brown communities or um, indigenous communities and communities uh, that are poor oh so i think the best way for us to encourage people to be vegan is just by giving them vegan food because it's i think it's the biggest roadblock for a lot of people like i feel like the roadblock should be moral or ethical and once you make that decision it should be easy about veganism but having the restaurant meal that gives you the same satisfaction but you're not eating some dead animal I personal life, be an example. Be the kind of person that other people might want to be like. Allow them to come to me and ask questions. And uh, it turns out that that's actually been really effective. Animals for the planet, for all of the people involved in the system who are oppressed and exploited. What I find to be most effective is talking about my experiences, actually going inside of factory farms and slaughterhouses because it's been seen, much less actually done. I let them ask me questions. If, if they find out I'm vegan either because they ask me or because, let's say I order something uh, at a restaurant and I say, oh, are you vegan? And say, yeah, and that's it. They have an opening and they can talk to me about it. When people ask me about it, we can have real conversations. Um, activism is really just a part of my everyday life. Um, taking pictures and videos and you know, posting things to social media. So that like people around the world feel like our animals are a part of their family. The power of knowing her so well sort of shifts their mind. Like, you know, just, I think it was yesterday, we got a comment on a YouTube video of Jenna that said, you know, I, I adore Jenna, I'm definitely going vegan. I encourage others to be vegan by pointing out really honestly and clearly what's happening. I'll say, do you know that you are eating a dead animal? Just try be being really frank about it. I took the liberation pledge to not sit where the body of an animal is being eaten. And a lot of my family members have actually been encouraging me to stand up for what I believe in, even if they don't believe. Primarily when I'm talking to others at the refuge, meeting animals and learning their stories and seeing them face to face is one of the most effective things we can do. Problem trying to influence other people, I don't think it works. I think we have to teach by example and not by what we say by what we do, that you are the same on the inside as you are on the outside, is not just lip service. Learning experience for me, um, initially, I think like most people, when I saw Earthlings, when I went to the talk, when I made the connection, I started taking some classes in psychology. It's to speak from my own personal experience of just how much health I've experienced through shifting my way of eating. Our professional teaching where we really dive into the nitty gritty science so that people can really understand physiologically what is transforming in their body. It's probably more by example. Certainly in my job as the executive director of the National Health Association, I plan conferences and cruises and travel. I enjoy being an activist because it's part of my personality. Public speaking and that's my wife hands out cards. 
to everybody she meets about veganism in gatherings and, and share my experiences and if they resonate with Publish a magazine that has stories of other individuals who became vegan in the all religions, all nationalities and all ages. Others to be vegan just through example, uh, just by being healthy and showing people the benefits of it and then just exposing uh, the truth of what happens. We show footage of animal agriculture and the industries and the media don't want us to see these. So encourage others to consider their animal product intake through my outreach in schools and at festivals and capacity that they're capable of in the moment in order to have a future of life on this planet for us. Being an activist for this long, I have angry protesting. Positive, friendly approach has worked better. It's effective way of approaching others to become vegan uh, through street activism with the Anonymous for the Voiceless. A lot of ways that I kind of work at it and they all, uh, I like um, I'm doing that with um, cubes of truth, uh, holding up signs, going to protests. Can't, I can't read the hearts of others, I can just read my own. Here is, is to pass along a personal invitation. If you're plant-based vegan or into climate change, help the planet and, and help the animal uh, situation, we've launched this Million Healthy Lives scoreboard. Real, this is evidence. So now you know why us vegans are just a little bit uncomfortable at Thanksgiving gatherings. It's all about proper consciousness, the way you prepare your food, the way you cook your food. And what goes on inside a slaughterhouse factory farm? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's something that people don't really see. I guess I got into that type of activism, I uh, started probably about five years ago. I'm doing investigation work purely because that's what helped me go vegan, so... I we're actually paying for the privilege of being poisoned. From waste seeping into our groundwater and shutting down entire cities, to fecal particles in the air introducing respiratory illnesses, to zoonotic disease outbreaks running rampant. Sit back and prepare yourself, because I'm about to drop a massive load. From supplements, I've been taking that maybe three, four times a week, just like every other day, whenever I feel like it. I'll... I just got back from court and all my proceedings are over. For the meantime, and I'm officially a criminal um, for trying to expose the animal holocaust. Do you think they're afraid of us? Do you feel that way? In India, not, but yeah, globally, yes. They are feeling the heat at least. That's what happened with uh, Amol uh, oh, marketing oh. executive. Uh, a new bit of information was presented. We wouldn't mind too much when we told you that uh, male chicks get gassed or shredded. When you when you say um <laughs> when you say the other things, solid three or four hours worth of. Just sad animal stuff. And I sat there on the couch and sobbing and sobbing. And that was it. Like, I haven't seen a lot of the vegan documentaries. That was all I needed. Well, I have a bigger vision for the development of, of food products and going all the way back to the source, uh, how it's grown, what the agricultural practices are, how to make that as sustainable as possible, and how to shift the world, how to move, move the needle toward uh, better ways of, of eating. Uh, what a season. Uh, being more of a plant-based diet, uh, getting away from uh, you know, just the, the animals and all that, man. I had to get away from that. So my energy is up. My, my body feels amazing. So yes, thank you for saying this, Kyrie. I've tried to tell so many people that I play basketball with how I eat plant-based, no animal product. I came to a realization that nothing really has to die for me to live. Yeah. No animal. A vegan and staunch promoter of peace in the 1960s, the Nepal was actively involved in seeking to end the conflict as homeland.